Awesome. I'm uh, really happy to uh, have us spend a little bit of time kicking off uh, our summer series, which is called the Summer of Psalms. So we just finished a very lengthy, for some of you kind of were feeling that burn to try and finish well, the journey with Jesus reading through all four Gospels. And so for congratulations to you who made it through and read all four Gospels chronologically. Um, we are moving from that into another uh, book study, so to say, which is in the book of Psalms. So if you have your Bible today, I'd love it if you took a moment to open to Psalm chapter one, Psalm chapter one. Um, I wanna encourage you, part of this is for us as pastors and the leadership in this church, want you to know that, that as a follower of Jesus Christ, it's absolutely indispensable that you personally take responsibility to know God's word, to know the truth that is in the scriptures, to read, study, reflect, discover, meditate, memorize God's word. <laughs> because it is the way of truth that, that points us through that truth to who God really is, to know and to walk with him personally. So we wanna encourage you that you would find a friend that you would make a decision, whether it's with roommates that you live with, in your own household, in the context of, um, of men's discovery groups. We have two men's discovery Bible studies that are gonna happen over the summer, discovery, uh, Bible discovery groups. Um, whether if you're in the youth ministry on Sunday mornings, that's what uh, Dominic and other youth leaders are gonna help our youth through. Um, we also want you to know that you have an opportunity to kind of walk through a process of journaling in the Psalms. And so uh, we have a local author in our area who put together this very cool Psalms journal. And it actually teaches you how to be able to read the Psalms and reflect and take notes. How many of you have journaling as a practice? It's usually a handful, maybe 25% to 50% of people who are in a church that you write those things down. What that does is it slows you down to be able to think about what you are expressing to God and or remembering in terms of the goodness of God. It's kind of like what James was sharing with us about looking back at those memory stones or the, those places of remembrance of God's faithfulness to us, right? Journaling helps us do that. So if you've never journaled before, or if you want a special journal during this, this is available at the info desk. And believe me, I'm, it's an incredible book. It's $10 which is really a deal for that. So if you want one as you go out today, the info bar, if you're watching online, um, if you swing by during the week, we'll try and have those available uh, to you as well. But the author gave us an incredible price for that as well. So when you come to church during the summer, I really wanna invite you, bring a paper Bible if you have one. If you don't have one, we give them away. They're on the, at the door on the way out or on, on the way out of the actual building. Please take that as a gift, bring a Bible with you, bring a journal with you. We're gonna be lit up in here, so it's easy for you to read. Um, and we're gonna have each week the unpacking of a Psalm or a theme within the Psalms. So I wanna to start today by just saying, what is a Psalm? What is a Psalm? Now, some of you may know the answer to that. Interestingly, the word Psalm is from the Greek word salin which means to pluck. So everybody take your hands, do your best imitation of James or Blaine or Andrew playing the guitar. But um, when the Hebrew Bible was translated into the Greek language, which happened in Alexandria, Egypt, actually, um, when they took the word uh, for that, they, they chose the word salin, which means to pluck. And so that from that, we get the word Psalms. Now, the Old Testament wasn't written in Greek, it was written in Hebrew. So it is very important to know what the Hebrew Bible says, which is tel tehelim, tehelim, which means praises. And we're gonna talk about why that word was there. Tehelim, which means praises. The book of Psalms was put together during the exile 
of the Jews to Babylon. Brief Old Testament history class. Are you okay? <laughs> so Israel and Judah were separate kingdoms for a period of time. Israel was conquered and, and destroyed. And then ultimately later, Judah was conquered. And when Judah was conquered, a portion of the population of Jerusalem that wasn't killed was put into exile in Babylon. And it was a tragedy for the people of Israel because their life had been built around worshiping God at his temple, which was in Jerusalem. That was where his holy presence uh, would, was located, in the Holy of Holies. And so their system and their structure for worshiping God and for being forgiven of sin was taken away from them. And it was a transformation of Judaism at that time into a process by which they were going to live by the law or the way of God. And, and at that time in Babylon, the Psalms, which had resided in the hands of the Levites and the worship leaders in the temple, had been preserved. And then they were put together when they were in exile. Everybody with me? This is gonna matter here in a second. It's because the book of Psalms has a structure to it. So if you're reading your English Bible, you're gonna see that, there, that the Psalms are split up in themselves into five books. There's 150 Psalms. They're split up into five books. And these books are, are contain what are, are as sacred songs or poems that are used in worship. If you read, the, how many of you are like, when you read a book, especially those of you who read fiction, a story, who reads the last chapter first? Are, there's some people, I see those hands. Thank you for your honesty. You're like, I want to know the end. How does this wrap up? And by the way, that's a super smart thing to do with the Bible. Like if you're super discouraged, read Revelation 22. It's a really good ending in the Bible, no matter how dark or difficult things get. So you can read the end. The end of the book of Psalms is Psalm 145 to 150. I encourage you to read those this week. In Psalm 145 to 150, every single one of them contain the word hallelujah, the word that we have as hallelujah, which is made up of two Hebrew words, Hallel and Yah, which means praise Yah or praise Yahweh, the name for God. Everybody tracking with me? Those Psalms at the end are going to, I'm sorry, Psalm 146 to 150, those five Psalms end as a conclusion. And the conclusion is a command. Hallelujah is a command. Don't, not like a suggestion, not like a, this is a good idea for you, but it's, it's a command. Praise Yah. It's not something we get to decide to do or not to do, but we're going to praise God in every situation. We're going to praise God on every morning, every evening, every day. We are going to be a people who direct praise to God. It's an awesome thing. So the book ends with this command. The book is called in Hebrew, praise. So it's meant for you to understand who God is and then to bring to him the praise that only God deserves. Now, when the 150 books are broken down into five books, check this out, because there were very, very smart, spirit-led, spirit-filled people who survived the purge of Jerusalem and were exiled. And they were putting this together very intentionally. At the end of every one of those five books, so in other words, find where it says book three, back off to the last Psalm. And the very last line of that Psalm is gonna say these words. May the Lord God of Israel be praised forever and ever, amen. So at the end of each of the books, whatever Psalm is there ends with that line. So what is being taught to us as God's people? What was being taught to Israel? 
May the Lord God of Israel be praised forever and ever. That God is worthy of our praise. And this book became the prayer book of God's people. It was a book that was put into five books. And for those of you who've studied the Bible, what might bring the mind, what might this bring to mind for you? The first five books of the Old Testament, which is um, the, the Torah, right? The Pentateuch, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And so this was to bring to mind in the book of Psalms, the ability for the Psalms to reveal the history, character, and nature of the God that they'd been walking with, but not just in reading or in studying it, but in engaging it with your creative right brain through singing it and through remembering it because of its poetic rhythms. Does everybody get this? You know so many songs you wish you didn't know that if you heard the tune, the lyric would start flowing through your mind. And if I did any sort of like sales ditty from a commercial, you would be angry with me for the rest of the day because it would just keep going on and on. God has made us in such a way that we resonate with music, with tunes, with songs, and it's how we remember. And because you couldn't just bring the scrolls to be copied, uh, instantaneously on a copier or uh, send it out to Am Amazon Kindle Direct to print more books and have them overnighted to you. The only way the people of God were going to remember was that those songs would reside in their heart. Everybody understand that? So that is, what is a psalm? So why a series in the psalms? Um, I kind of already kind of gave it away there, but because it is a book of prayers containing the writer's innermost questions and doubts, as well as their praises and thanksgivings. <sighs> Let's look at a New Testament passage just for a minute. So if you have your Bible, turn to Ephesians. Paul twice in the New Testament mentions Psalms. Uh, in Colossians chapter three, and in Ephesians chapter five. And this context is really important as to why God decided to preserve this revelation of truth in the book of Psalms. So Psalms chapter, or I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter five, verses 18 to 20. Eh, let's go 17 to 20 just for fun. Bonus verse. Everybody ready? Therefore, uh, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, so if you're reading from something different, it might be a little different. Lord, for those who are here, give them ears to hear your word. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is a dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all the things, for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to one another in the fear of God. Super interesting. Ephesus was a party town. Ephesus had a, a, a very famous temple where people would go to party. A lot of drinking in that town, a lot of sleeping around, uh, the temple was a uh, place of temple prostitution. Um, so party time. So the Ephesian people who'd come to know God understood uh, drunkenness and they understood the effects of it. And I want you to think about any time for you that you've been drinking, that you've drunk alcohol um, and maybe drunk alcohol to excess. It's probably most of us here. Some of you, um, that's not been your thing. But I want you to think about it. what are the two reasons really that people drink or that you might be drinking uh, now? That might be a thing that you're kind of hooked into. So yes, thank you. So being social and, and celebrating 
partying, having fun, um, toasting, all those kinds of things. But the other reason people drink a lot is because they're facing hardship. Maybe that's you, you're facing hardship. And alcohol is a depressant and alcohol can make you forget for, for a short time. Alcohol can numb the pain. Alcohol, alcohol can take the edge off. A lot of you know this. You've had that experience in your life. So it's super interesting to me that Paul says, look, there's this experience you know as Ephesians. There's an experience you know as Californians, which is being drunk. When you're drunk, you're a little looser. You're not in control. The spirits that you drank are a little bit in control. Is everybody with me on this? It says, don't get drunk with wine because that leads to dissipation, which if everybody can go, <laughs> you can feel free to do that. It's like the air being let out of a balloon. It's, it's like, you know, a balloon is in its glory if it's totally full. If there's some helium left on the planet, for, for that balloon to be filled and fly is the glory of the balloon, right? Dissipation is emptiness. He says, don't get drunk with wine because you're going to end up feeling empty. Even if it was fun during the party and you were celebrating, it's the next morning, it might not feel so good. <laughs> and it also, it just right? Whatever, life is still there. And especially if you're drinking because you're facing hardship or difficulty. Paul goes, look, believers, followers of Jesus Christ, those who are filled with the Spirit, you don't have to do that anymore. Don't get filled with wine for it leads to emptiness, but be filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, what do you do? What's an expression of that? Speak to another, one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs giving thanks in your heart to God. So I told you that to explain this about Psalms. Because Psalms are meant to engage you in the greatest moments of your life, to be able to express the greatest praise to God, to worship Him, exalt Him, lift Him up, thrill in Him. Has everybody got me on this? It's absolutely thrill in God. And it's also meant to be there for you when life is horrible. When you're facing the greatest difficulties, the greatest discouragements, the greatest betrayals, the greatest sadness, the greatest breakup or disconnects, the greatest um, sudden loss, that God is going to be there for you that God is going to understand, that God can take whatever you need to say to him. Because when you read these Psalms and you see how vulnerable, candid, bold, straight these Psalm writers were with God, and you realize God's big enough to handle you, that's a big deal. The Psalms are in five books, but in those five books, there are contained two kinds of psalms primarily. There's some subcategories, but they are lament psalms and they are praise psalms. The lament psalm is given to us when there is pain, confusion, and anger about how horrible the world is <laughs> or our own personal world is. It's when we're facing what's wrong with the world and we need to come to God and say, God, why are you letting this happen? God, do something about this. I can't take it anymore. Have you ever had those moments? I have. And so Psalms give us that expression in our heart. And then in the praise Psalms, it's the joy and celebration. It's what's good in the world. It tells God's story of overcoming and our thankfulness for him to be present with us. It teaches us the character of God. Last summer, we did a series called The God We Know, and we were looking at the attributes of God. Well, we're going to hear a lot about that again this summer, about the God we know. 
And we're going to become a more emotionally healthy church to know that God can handle us even when we can't handle ourselves. God can handle us when people in our lives can't handle us <laughs> and when we can't handle the situations that we face. So we are going to come to know God and we're going to come to know ourselves. This is where we're going this summer and I hope that you have an incredible time with it. Uh, what I want us to do is we're a house of prayer and so I want us to actually just take a moment um, to, for you to actually pray with someone near you. If you're not used to praying out loud or if that's new to you or if you're new to Christianity or if you're, this is your first time ever to church, I'm not putting you on a spot. Just be real. This is a room full of very nice people. Just say to the person next to you, you know what? I just don't pray out loud. That's not my thing. I haven't done that yet. And that's fine. But uh, find a group of two or three people, maybe you came with somebody, and I just want you to pray for a moment. And I want you to pray in thanksgiving to God for his preservation of the Psalms and all that he has purposed in them for us to know him. And I don't want you to pray a prayer of courage. I want you to pray and say, God, will you allow me to know myself and will you allow me to know you better in the course of the summer of 2023. As I read and engage these Psalms, as I read and engage these Psalms, as I talk about these Psalms with others, as I congregate with God's people and we reflect together about who God is and how we're to live in the light of his praise, okay? There's gonna be some instrumental music playing while you pray with each other and our worship team's gonna be back up here to, to lead us in a, in a closing song, okay? Go ahead and find a person near you. Find a friendly face. Take a few moments to pray. Don't run away. This is a, a time God wants to meet with us. You don't have to do too much talking, just go right to prayer. If you're watching online, take a minute. If you're by yourself, just pray to the Lord. If you have someone that's watching with you, just take some time with them to, to pray. Just yield yourself to what God wants to be doing um, in this summer of the Psalms.
Um, just going to ask you to wrap that up. If everybody could stand as we get ready to close. <clears throat> so, so um, as we look to next week, just to kind of tease you a little bit, um, in the five books that the Psalms are split, in up, it split up in, there is a... Um, conclusion in Psalm 146 to 150, in which we say hallelujah. So let's say that together. Hallelujah. <laughs> and read that this week. Interestingly, if there's a conclusion, what would you expect that there is at the beginning, everybody? An introduction, right? And so the introduction to the Psalms is Psalm 1 and 2. So next week, we're going to look at Psalm 1 and 2, as well as Psalm 22 to 24, which are Psalm 2 and Psalm 22 to 24 are messianic psalms. Ex the expectancy that God would send a Messiah, um, and even as uh, James was sharing earlier, Psalm 23 that many people know that includes the Messiah being a good shepherd. Um, so it's going to be a fantastic time next week. Lord, we just thank you so much for inviting us to know you, everything about you, and also for us to be able to be, to live in the fullness of freedom in your presence. Freedom in your holy presence through the forgiveness of Jesus. I want to invite our prayer team members to head over toward um, the windows. If you're here, we, you know that we are a church that wants to be a responsive church. We're going to sing this song for two or three minutes. During that time, you can pray with a prayer partner. Maybe that word that Justin shared about repentance and cleansing landed with you. I just encourage you to go over to Al or Dora or to Jen uh, over there, to Andrew, to Kathleen, to Heather, to Jerry, to Terrell. Take a minute to pray. Is there something stirring inside of you where you're like, I need a hunger for the Word of God? And you want to just seal that in prayer. We're a response church. Maybe during this song, you want to move up into this front area just to press into the Lord. Please do that. We'll sing out for two or three minutes and I'll release you parents to go get kids or whatever. But the band's going to keep playing for another five or minutes or longer. If you just want to linger in God's presence, worship Him. Lord, we just want to be your worshiping people. We want to lean into you. And even as we, we sung earlier, we want to build our life upon your love. It's a firm foundation. Holy, there is no one like you. Thank you for psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We want to sing and make melody in our hearts to you now and give thanks to you. Let's respond to the Lord.